This week on Sport Fishing, we're down the beautiful East Cape, and we're gonna be fishing down at Hotel Palmas de Cortez. It's a beautiful hotel down here. And this whole region, I've been coming down here for over 30 years, love to come down here. And what we're doing right now is we're slow trolling along the beach here at La Rivera, looking for rooster fish. And later in the episode, we have a special treat for you. We have a young lady, Katie, that we're taking out. She's only about 12 years old, and it's her last wish. And uh, she's asked me to take her out for her last wish to catch her a marlin, help her catch a marlin. She's uh, been dreaming of catching a marlin. And uh, when a kid calls and says it's their very last wish, uh, it's kind of hard to say no to that. So hopefully, and God willing, we're going to get her a marlin. So that's what we have planned later in this episode too. But right now, it's all about rooster fish. All right, so stay tuned for this week's exciting episode and very special episode of sport fishing. I'm Dan Hernandez and I live to fish. That's a nice vermilion right there. Yeah! This is what fishing's like. I have been fishing along the Pacific coast my entire life. Let me bring you in in the action and share with you some great fishing tips along the way. Slow trolling, a large bait, and uh, fish came up and ate it. So we don't know what it is yet, we haven't seen it. Hoping it's a rooster fish, that's what we're fishing for. But in here it could be anything, it could be a Sierra, it could be a Jack, a lot of Jacks in this area. So, feels like a heavy fish. Let's see what this fish is. See if he's ready to come in now. Swimming to the boat. See what it is. Oh, there he is. Ooh. I don't think it's a rooster fish. Maybe. Oh! Line broke. It's right there. It was a nice rooster fish. All right, put another bait on. Just jumped right there. Put another bait on so you can get another one. Just got bit. Second fish. Don't know what this one is. Taking some line. Oh, it spit the bait out right there. Had another rooster fish. This is what we're trolling. Big baits. So the first one was uh, a nice rooster fish and he ate a big bait, but we were only using 20 pound test line. Now we bumped up. This reel's got 40. My rod's got uh, 40 on it too. So. Put our first bait on and see if we can get one. That's uh, fish two, me zero, so far. Got one. We went by that ponga, the guy was hooked up and just got bit. He's coming right to the boat. Oh, there it is, right there. Little rooster fish. That's a rooster. Little rooster. There we go. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna bring the fish in right now. There he comes. Little rooster fish. Chiquito. That's the fish we're trying to catch. Yeah, he's not hooked very deep. Yeah, really pretty fish, little fish. Probably one of the smallest ones I've ever caught. 
I've landed a few over 80 and a bunch of them over 60, probably 10 or 12, 15 over 60. There he goes. Not the best release, but he got away. All right, we're gonna take a little break from the action here in the East Cape and uh, go to the tackle box and give you a good look at the gear we're using for today's trip. This week in the tackle box, I wanna to talk to you about what we're doing this week down the East Cape. Right now we're fishing right along the beach and we're targeting rooster fish. And this one particular area in front of La Rivera Seems to be a lot of rooster fish. Sometimes we find them there, sometimes we find them at the lighthouse. But with the weather we have today, we're staying close to shore right around La Rivera. Now, normally these smaller rooster fish, you catch them on sardinas with a small live bait hook and the baits that you're using are really small, like a, like a fat anchovy. They're, they're really small though. But normally we would fish like a size one, size two hook. But today we have big baits, so we have to use big hooks. And that's why when I travel down the East Cape, I always carry a selection of hooks with me. And I have some of the bigger hooks, just in case we have to, you know, fish with the big bait. I have hooks like this that work out really good. And then I also have the small ones in case we get the sardinas and we can fish with the small bait. And we have those there too. But in today's episode, all the baits are really big. The rooster fish are in that smaller to medium class, but because the bait's big, we don't pick the hook according to the size of fish we want to catch. We pick the hook to the size of bait that we're using. If I put a small like size two or size four hook on these big baits, we'd never be able to set the hook, never catch a fish, the bait will just come right off. So that's why we're using these bigger hooks and they work out really good. To give you an idea of what they look like, this is a 9174 bronze by Mustad. These work out really good. You can get these in different sizes. And for today's episode, we're using five, six aughts. We even have eight aughts with us if we need those too, because the baits are so big. And that's all you need. Fishing rooster fish, use those live baits, have a wide selection of hooks, and you won't be disappointed. You'll catch a lot of fish. Well, let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. Just got bit. It looks like it's a little bit nicer fish. We got 40 pound on here. Fishing 40 pound test line, live bait, eight aught must add hook. Yeah, eight aught. I know for inshore fishing, it's kind of big, but we're using big baits right now. So you have to use a big hook. Haven't seen the fish yet, but it feels heavier than the last ones. So hopefully it's a nice sized fish. There he is, there's color. Oh, it's not a rooster. Not a rooster fish, Jack Cavell. Jack. Nice little Jack Carvel. Beautiful fish. Okay, go ahead and let it go. There he goes. All right, that was cool. All right, nothing left to do now than go catch a marlin. Hopefully we'll go catch a marlin. We'll take a little break from the action here. When we return, we'll be out there looking for marlin.
Doing a real good job, Katie. <laughs> you got a marlin going, Katie. This is what you wanted. Uh-oh, she's smiling. We're in trouble. Is this happiness? <laughs> Here, Casey, you can get behind her there. This is her mother, Casey, out with her. Okay, we got the marlin right here. The marlin's right next to the boat. It's gonna jump. Oh! It's jumpy. See how beautiful it is. Turn this way. Did you get in front of him? Okay, here's a fish. Here's your fish. Beautiful marlin. Here's a fish. We're going to go ahead and release it really quick. But this is what we came for for her last wish was to catch a billfish, a marlin, and she got a marlin. I'm very sad. Congratulations. Oh, Good job. All right. We can go ahead and release the fish right now. There he goes. All right. Congratulations. How did it feel? Feel good? You did it all by yourself. All right. We were only trolling for about 15 minutes. That striper came up right behind the boat. Our deck cap went and dropped the bait back, but the fish didn't go for the ballyhoo bait. He went right after that zucker lure, ate the lure right there next to the boat. It was in close to us. And uh, the rest was all Katie, she all by herself. I held the rod a little bit for her, but she turned the reel the whole way. And uh, it happened so quick, we were still putting the camera gear together. She fought half that fish all by herself before we were ready to go. But she did really good, congratulations. All right, let's go find another one, Captain. Captain Dan, thank you. This week in the galley, we're in Cerritos, California at Pier 76. It's Pier 76 Fish and Grill. Standing next to me is the owner. Hey, Chris. Dan, a pleasure. Thank thanks, you. Thanks for inviting us over. Absolutely. It's wonderful to have you. Thanks. And Chris goes to Fred Hall show, likes to go fishing, has two locations, and today we're here at the Cerritos one. And uh, what are you going to make up for us today? Today, Dan, we're going to make mussels over fries. So it's a kind of a take of, uh, off the classic move free, you know. I like to use a Mediterranean mussel uh, versus a blue mussel that, that we find on the East Coast. And the reason why is the meat to shell ratio is a little bit better with the black mussel, the Mediterranean mussel. Okay, so we're going to leave the mussel for later on in the process. And this is what we're going to do first. We have some red onions roasted poblanos, smoked bacon, clam juice, green onions, carrots, and white wine. We have our pan. It's just, we're gonna get it warm first. We always wanna put cold oil into a warm pan. And just a touch, we don't need a whole lot of oil in this because the bacon's gonna render off some fat as well. That pan is already warm. The first part of the process, we are going to sweat our red onions. Our roasted poblanos. And our bacon. Our onions are slightly sweated and we've kind of heated everything. Remember, the bacon's cooked already, so we don't really need to go that far. We're going to add the white wine. and then we're going to add our mussels. After the white wine, the white wine has reduced, and you can see they just are just starting to pop open. At this point, we're going to add our clam juice, our carrots, and then we're gonna cover them for maybe about a minute to let them steam. 
So now we're gonna check the muscles. As we can see, they're just starting to, they've started to crack right there. I mean, look at this muscle right here, it's beautiful. Look at that thing, wow. It's amazing. At this point, I'm just gonna add a little bit of butter just to help round out the acids inside the dish. We're gonna finish it with just the green onions. So here we have our fries. I just pour the broth right over it. The best part. Yeah. And then we have the rest of this goodness. <laughs> that looks delicious. Hey Chris, this just looks delicious. I know. It's a beautiful dish. I know, it looks great. Look at these muscles, just pull, plump, full. The key, Dan, once again, is not overcooking them, so. I have to try one. You do. Of course, I grabbed the biggest one in there, but <laughs> I have to try it. Mmm. That is so That's good. That's good, wonderful. Thanks, Chris. Likewise. And where can everybody find you at? Everybody can find us here in Cerritos at uh, 11265 183rd uh, in the Plaza One, the new Plaza 183. Right across here from the Cerritos Mall. Yeah. And just a beautiful dish. And this is a dish you can actually do at home. It's not that complicated. Just have to have those nice fresh ingredients. Exactly. And the number one thing everybody does wrong with the seafood dish is they overcook it. it. See, I didn't even have to tell <laughs> that one. So, yeah. thanks again. Dan, pleasure having you. All right, let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. Oh, we got him, we got him. We just hooked him. There we go, we got him, we got him. Come on, where are we gonna go? What happened there, we had two marlin come up behind the boat, swim with the trolling lures, and we were able to hook one of them. They can't slid this belly hoo back to it. He's right out there, he's jumping like crazy. Oh, beautiful. You're doing good. Okay, the fish is now more straight up and down. Let me help Katie out for a little bit. So when you get a situation like this, it's basic fishing. All you want to do is lift up, and every time the fish kind of shakes its head a little bit, wind down, and just slowly bring the fish up to the boat. This isn't a giant marlin, but it's a good sized marlin. It's over 100 pounds. There he comes. He's gonna jump right here. There he is. Beautiful marlin. Okay, we're gonna bring the marlin in right now. Okay, here comes the fish. Is that right, Sarah? We're gonna hold it. Wait, you're not gonna <laughs> Okay, here's our striped marlin we just got. We both took turns on it, Katie and I. It's a beautiful fish. You wanna touch it, Katie? You wanna touch it? Okay, we're gonna go ahead and release it. There it goes. Beautiful striped marlin. There he goes. Woo! That's how you make someone's last wish come true. Get them two marlin in one morning. Just awesome. You happy? You happy? <laughs> very, very happy. All right, we got thumbs up. Thank you. We're just heading home, heading back to the hotel, and we had a sailfish come up and eat our st stinger rig, a ballyhoo that was set way back there. So we're just trying to clear the lines right now. Francisco Deccan's bringing in the lines. And uh, Katie here is going to bring in her first sailfish. All right, here we go, Katie. Here we go. Turn the handle. You, just like you did your marlin. 
Let's see if we can get this fish up here real quick. So nice. Three marlin in one day. Unbelievable. Or three billfish, I should say. We had a short bite on a marlin that we lost. We had it up and jumped a couple times. This is a sailfish. Less than perfect conditions. But uh, fishing wise, it doesn't get much better. We're out here for Katie, get her very first billfish, and we did that this morning in 15 minutes. Unbelievable. So I'm just gonna bring the sailfish up in between all these swells. Normally sailfish like to jump a lot. This guy is not jumping. He's heading straight down. Okay, here we come. Here's our sailfish. Beautiful sailfish. Okay, we're just gonna bring the fish up real quick. This is a sailfish. This is a fish we wanted to get for Katie. And we got her a couple of marlin and this beautiful sailfish. All right, we're gonna take a little break from the action. First, we're gonna release this guy. Okay, here we go. This is Dan Hernandez, hoping you enjoyed this week's very special episode of Sport Fishing. It was great taking Katie out and catching her first billfish. Well, next week we're going to be back here at beautiful Palmasay Cortez in the East Cape looking for more billfish. We'll have Katie on the boat again, and this time we'll have her brother and sister too. And afterwards, we're going to go help release a bunch of sea turtles into the Sea of Cortez. So make plans to join us next week right here on Sport Fishing.